This time on Jairus of All, you get to find out how absolutely insane Kratos' Blades of Chaos actually are. And we're gonna play with some metal. Meta. 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 This build sounds like it's straightforward on the surface, but today I'm gonna talk about some things that people usually leave out whenever they're talking about building. First of all, I wanna make these things accurate, and in order to make them accurate, I have to choose one version of the Blades of Chaos. There'll only be one! And there are, honestly, right around 30. In every single game, there's five different versions of the sword, and there's a bunch of different games. So there's a bunch of different swords, and all of them are different. So which one did I choose? I'm using the very first version of the Blades of Chaos that you get when you're playing God of War 4. This isn't the original version of the Blades, it's slightly changed for that game, but that version looks the best. It's smoothed out, it has the best graphics, it's easy to get a template from it, it makes more sense to actually use because it doesn't have big, long, spidery points coming off of the front of the thing, and, and it also has a guard that makes more sense than a lot of the other ones. We'll talk about that later, but right now, I want to show you a part of this building process that nobody seems to include in their videos, and show you how difficult it is, and how to make something truly accurate. You would think you'd just be able to look up how big the Blades of Chaos are. And you can, but the answer is wrong. I did a lot of digging to make sure that these were truly going to be accurate because the scale that I found that are supposed to be the size of them was obviously not correct. It was on the fandom wiki page and it was not right. It said they were 21 inches long and there isn't a chance that they're that small. I did find a picture from the developers of the game where they released the in-game model from the old God of War versus the one from God of War 4, so that you can see the difference between the two. You can see there's a massive height difference, and his arms and legs are far too long for the size of his body. They did this, they said, because it makes him look more like a god, and they decided that that would make him look more epic in the game. But for God of War 4, they wanted him to be old and more human, so they gave him actual realistic human proportions. In this version, he's 2.341 meters tall, which is 7 foot 6 approximately, and in God of War 4, he's 6 foot 6 inches tall, which is 1.943 meters. Luckily, in this picture, they have Kratos' Blades of Chaos on his back, which is wonderful because then I can take a measurement of the sword, see what percentage that is of his height, and then I can figure out how long the sword would be in real life, which is 898 millimeters. And this is from the game, and that's accurate. The only thing that would make this inaccurate is the depth of field, because the swords are behind him, and so it's basically measuring them from six inches closer to the camera view that you're looking at. So if anything, they're larger than that, but that's 35.35 inches long, which is 14 inches longer than they said on the fandom wiki page. The problem with this is that I didn't know definitively if that image was even from the game developers. Just because it says it is, doesn't mean that it actually is. Because you find all kinds of fan art and everything else online, you have to do some more research to find out if you're actually getting the right answer. So I got these three pictures. This one is an action figure, this one is from the box art from one of the games, and this is a screenshot from God of War 4. So now, I have to figure out what the ratios are between the blade and the body in these pictures and see if I have the right measurement from this one. On this action figure, there's a rope around his waist. And as luck would have it, in this picture, there's a rope around his waist. I can use that portion of his body as the scale for the blades because I can measure from his feet to his head, and take that proportion. It's all simple math. Math is important, and it is! I did that for this one, and I accounted for what I thought it would be and what it could be and the range that it's supposed to be from this image that's supposed to be from the game developers fell exactly within the range that I found from this one. 751 to 701 millimeters and this one is 744. So it's right near the top, which the top range is the one that I thought it was actually gonna be. So I was almost dead on. And this one's 898 and the range for seven foot six Kratos is 845 up to 905, again, right within range. So I know that this action figure is accurate and my measurements are probably accurate. The box art is a little more difficult. He's standing at a weird perspective, the camera's pointing up and I can't tell if that blade is canned to the side or not. If it is, it's gonna be too short. Unless it's straight to the camera, then it should be accurate. And so after measuring this one, it came up at 728 millimeters for seven foot six Kratos, which is like 260 millimeters short. That one was wrong, but that is just drawn box art. Third one, screenshot from the actual God of War 4 game. And 
This is difficult because I have to measure his hand. So as accurately as I possibly could with a set of calipers, I measured his hand on the paper and then I measured his hand in this model. And lo and behold, I came up with 744.56 millimeters, which is 0.56 millimeters away from the game model that the developers released. At this point, I knew that I probably had accurate measurements. If you scaled this one to the big size, seven foot six Kratos, then it's 897, which is one millimeter off. So I know that I've got the right size for the blade now, which allows me to finally make my templates. All I had to do then was find this picture, which is a perfect side-on view of the sword that I can use to make my templates out of. Now you get to see how absolutely nonsensical these things really are, because this is how big the sword is for seven foot six Kratos, which is insane. You are insane. No, you're insane. And this is like an inch and a half thick, and it, well, I mean, it's made of magic and stuff, but if you made this out of steel, it would be too heavy for you to do much of anything with. This is six foot six Kratos. It is substantially smaller. It's almost realistic, if not for the fact that this is about an inch and a quarter thick. Still not able to really do anything with. And this is the blade scaled to my height at five foot 10, which is a little bit more reasonable, but it's still about an inch thick. I think it was 1.066 inches thick is how big this blade is supposed to be, which means that it would probably weigh around 30 to 40 pounds. But I can't just build the sword from this template. I need to make another template from this template. I copied the outside of the sword template onto MDF, and then I cut out the middle section, and I copied that lined up with the outside template onto the MDF. And then I looked at the curvature of the transitions between the blade sections, and I copied those onto the MDF, which I didn't realize I was gonna sand them off, but I did. Oh, and I got a new sander. With great patronage comes new tools. I got an electric file to do the bevels on this, and I could afford to get this because of my patrons, whose names are all over the table. Thanks, Patreon patrons. You guys are the best. And to show my appreciation, you guys can look forward to an email containing all of the files that I used to get the scale, as well as the final templates from this thing. I'll just have to figure out how to make them size accurate when I send them digitally. If you want access to the files and templates from these builds that I do and your name on the table and help support my channel by helping me get tools like this, the link to my Patreon is in the description below the video. You might not think this is that necessary to have this form to get more templates from, but it is, trust me. Because these are complex shapes, you can't just take the flat image and cut that out and have a piece of metal that's the size that you want it to be. First of all, because this thing is going to be hollow because that's the only way you're gonna be able to wield something like this on the end of a chain. And because of that, I can't just carve it out of steel. So this part is necessary. There may be a way for you to take an actual 3D model of something like this and flatten the parts out so that you can just take templates from that. But I couldn't find a 3D model of this exact blade, which is the one that I really wanted to do. So with this made, I can trace where the edges of the sections of the blade are. And with all the edges traced, I can peel my template off and I can cut that out and stick it on paper. And then I have an accurate template for this. Let me show you how different it is from just the picture of the sword. All these templates are laid out with their respective counterpart. It might not be deadly obvious, right away how different they are. But if you look just this one right here, you can see what an incredible size difference there is between the flat version and the three-dimensional version. But all of them, even the ones that look similar like this or this one, and even this long one, you can see there's a substantial amount more material that you need once you're making a three-dimensional form from it. Which is what made this painstaking, time-consuming process necessary. But now that I've got my templates, it's time to cut out some metal. Mad Meta. Meta. Look at this bad boy. One of my patrons was talking to me about this project online and he said I was insane for wanting to cut out all the pieces of metal that I needed to cut out with an angle grinder. And he thought it was ridiculous and he said that he wasn't gonna let me do that and he bought me a bandsaw. This is a wood cutting bandsaw, but the blade that I have in it is a metal cutting blade and you can cut metal with this. You're just not supposed to cut ferrous metal with it, like steel, which is what I'm about to cut because it runs at a higher speed than a metal cutting bandsaw normally would and then the blade gets hot and then it ruins the blade. I'm gonna use water to cool the blade constantly and I'm gonna cut a little bit and let it cool. Hopefully I'll be able to get through it without ruining too many blades.
Big thanks to Big John, Big John's pipe laying service. If you can drill it, we can fill it. Now for the fun part, trying to bend all these plates that I cut to match the form of this thing. This has a little more bend in it than it needs, but that will make it easier to pull it together with the other side of the blade. Instead of having to push it, I can just pinch them. So that one's done. This might look like I'm just bending on this, but there's actually some reason behind the bends that I'm making. This curve is uh, even with the perpendicular line of the two edges of the blade. Basically, if I put this vertical to the two edges where they meet the jaws of the vise, that will curve this blade in the way that this is curved. It's easier to unbend it than to bend it. So if I do this the whole way down the blade, and then I can straighten it back out to the correct level by smacking it on the little anvil section here. And it should work out. The front edge is the edge of the blade and the blade has to be just over an inch thick. So that means each side has to be half an inch tall. So as I'm bending this, I can lay it down on the table and see if that front edge lays flat. If it does, then at least it's curved evenly. If it doesn't, then I need to make it do that. But then at the same time, I can also check, accounting for the thickness of the metal at the bottom, if I've reached the right height. So this obviously is, is far too high because it's an inch by itself right now. So I need to unbend this substantially. But between this check and trying it on the blade here, I can get very close and any tweaking that needs done will happen in the next step. It's off by an eighth. That might be it. Pretty much there. Close enough. All done. Not sure if you noticed, but when I cut these out, one piece is smaller than the other, and it's so that when they go together, there's an overlap. I don't want to weld on the actual blade. Like this is going to be the knife edge of the sword. I don't want to weld that. If they came together evenly, I would have to. Since they're offset like this, I'm gonna weld in there. This front piece of metal will be the sword blade right here. And this is mild steel. It doesn't matter if it gets hot or not. This is a YouTube weapon. <laughs> and then I'm gonna weld on the inside. These are gonna be more than stable. And I'm not concerned with knocking the scale off. These are gonna go together just fine because I am welding on open metal there and it's gonna have it on the backside. This is gonna be more than strong enough to hit a watermelon with. I've been working on these for a really long time. This is the payoff. The nice thing about metal is anything you do, you can undo or redo and fix. Pretty much anything. Why is that doing that? That's really strange. There's no gas. That's why I was doing that. If I can figure it out. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? What the f What the f Yeah, they're way too high. Oh my goodness. Hey, let's turn you back up. Why well, won't it turn? You know what they say, the bigger the hammer, the easier it is to fix. It was warping out of place a little bit from the heat. I should have tacked both sides, but I didn't, because I'm lazy. Bounce back into place with the hammer. Now she's lined up again. Basically now I'm going to take the plates that are longer and those butt joints line up together so that I can put these pieces together. So it's gonna be long plate to long plate the whole way up. And then once I have those joined, then I'll line up the other parts 
and I'll flex it if I need to, and then I'll do the other side, and then the actual blade will be finished, except for grinding and tuning and beating on it with a hammer and swearing a lot. Here we go. Oh, these need a different swivel point. If I do say so, that is pretty awesome. It needs tuned, but it's just tacked. It should be relatively easy to straighten this out with a big hammer and a little bit of time and anger. But getting this far on this makes me want to put the aluminum parts together, which requires AC TIG welding, which sounds cool and looks cool. So my friend whose house that I'm at right now, borrowing his equipment, who doesn't want to be on camera, just told me about this fancy tape that he has that you can put on something that you're going to weld and it will resist the heat and won't leave a bunch of schmoo behind. So now I have something to hold all these pieces in place so I don't have to fight with magnets. But speaking of magnets, he told me something I had no idea existed. There's magnets that they make now that don't stick to steel, but only stick to aluminum. Didn't even know this was a thing and it holds on tight too. I'll put a link to these in the description because that's really cool. But now it's time to see if I can TIG weld this aluminum together. I've only tried this one other time in my life. So here we go. I can't even get it there. Here we go. Can't tell what I'm doing. I wasn't giving it enough pedal. And then I did and I went through it. I did it. It's not pretty. Oh no. The tape melted, so I'll try that one again when it cools down. <laughs> That's a very small piece and the tape melted. Let's do this one. This probably works really well for steel because steel doesn't conduct the heat out away from where you're trying to weld nearly as fast as aluminum does. So as soon as I hit this with any kind of heat, the whole piece is getting up to a really high temperature. Steel wouldn't do that. I melted it. The last time I TIG welded aluminum, it was not nearly this hard. There's a reason my channel is called Jairus of All, Master of None. I'll try it, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna be good at it. <laughs> Obviously, I need to practice this a little bit before I'll be able to actually put these together. But there is a test that I wanna try real quick that's gonna be really interesting. In my last video, a couple of people commented that you can braise this stuff together, and I had people message me and tell me that it's possible to combine steel and aluminum via different brazing methods. But one thing I wanted to show first is silicon bronze, and apparently from the welders that I talked to, aluminum bronze both do the same thing, where you can braise to both of them, but as soon as the brazing is finished, the weld breaks. So we're gonna test it and find out. And then we have one more test. Well, it's not pretty, but it's holding somewhat. I put a ton of this silicon bronze into it and I watched the whole plate of aluminum melt and I could see the rod as it pushed into the aluminum. So if this is ever going to work, it's gonna be this time. If you do just a nice even braise, it does this right away. You hear that? That's the weld separating. You can hear the metal separating as it cools. That's cool. <laughs> Once this is cooled down the whole way, you won't even hardly be able to touch it without it falling apart. Now that's not to say it isn't possible, and people said that I should do aluminized bronze instead of silicon bronze, but I couldn't find that. And somebody said that if you use a zinc-based brazing alloy, then you can braze the two together. But I couldn't find any of that either. And when I did find it, it said that it was only to be brazed from galvanized to aluminum or something special like that. Not mild steel to aluminum. Basically, this is a difficult process, but there is one thing that I wanna try. They have these universal aluminum brazing rods, and this is not aluminum welding, it's aluminum brazing. And I wanna see if I braze the steel with silicon bronze, if this aluminum brazing alloy will stick to it. It probably won't, but it's worth a shot. Because if this does work, it should be a pretty strong bond because this stuff is about as strong as aluminum is. Did you catch it? it like, I didn't think it was gonna break. I was like, Oh, I'll pick it up. And then I just kind of like went to adjust my fingers and it fell apart. Yeah, that's how strong that is. Yeah, there's flakes coming off. Worthless. I'll braise the edge of the steel first. Oh, 
I'll put the aluminum on top of soapstone so as not to braise it to the plate that I'm using, which is made out of aluminum also. Anyway. Stay together. Come on. Well, I got this rod onto both of them, but it didn't want to. It did with the aluminum, that was fine, but it was hard to get it onto that stuff. But it did go, so now the question is, when this cools down, is it actually gonna stick together? And I have to get much better at it than I am right now, because if the surface of my Blade of Chaos looks like that, it doesn't really matter. All right, moment of truth. Yep. Well, thanks for watching me fail at welding. If you want to see what happens in this project next week when I finally get the sword together, make sure you subscribe with notifications turned on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.